Hello, what is up, everybody? Uh, we are back at it again with me, Richie Rich, your host of the Orc 9th Edition review and roundup. And so the last video was a bit of an overview talking about the changes. And in this video, I wanted to talk more in depth on uh, what I think will be winners in the Orc clans and uh, what I think will be... Honestly, I think most of the Orc clans are big winners in this codex, and there's just so many things to try out and test with the Orc codex. I'm pretty excited. I have an upcoming game with some friends on Saturday. That's going to be a lot of fun with the new Orc codex. And I think overall, most of you guys should be happy that we got a new Orc codex that has a lot of different ways to field the Orcs and has different play styles. And so many units now are viable. It's absolutely insane. All right, first off, we have the Goths. So Goths overall got a huge buff, I believe. They are a lot stronger now. So now each time a model rolls a 6, it doesn't you don't get an additional attack, you score an additional hit. So it automatically counts as having hit, which is huge. And uh, each time a model with this culture attacks, if it had charged or heroically intervened, then you add one strength to that unit. Now, the interesting thing is that this applies to any unit. It doesn't specify infantry or anything like that. This is this actually Goff's thing. So it affects all the vehicles, all the cavalry, all the bikers. So I think that's pretty big. Adding a one strength to a lot of these other units may be pretty huge. Especially given that some of the vehicles are sitting around tier 7, tier 8. So they could be actually quite devastating in close combat now. Now the Warlord trait... Proper Killy is uh, it's a good trait. Uh, it's definitely outshined by some of the other traits that are the native, just orc traits. But it's still a, it's still a good trait. So you have what plus one attack for the warlord, and plus one AP penetration. So definitely nothing to scoff at. And for sure, when you're running multiple detachments and you want to have multiple war bosses, this is definitely something you want to give to one of your war bosses to make it more Killy. Now. Unbridled Carnage is the the Goths with spe specific stratagem, and I think this is a great stratagem. It is a little pricey for 2 CP, any uh, Goth core. Now, this is specifically Goth core or Goth characters in your army. Uh, they're mucking about hits on a 5+. plus. Now, given that a lot of units are actually core like bikers, uh, this could be pretty devastating, especially with people playing hordes lists. I mean, if you have 30 orcs and they are rolling for you know three attacks two plus the choppa 90 attacks and then you're adding 33 percent more attacks that's you're talking about 120 attacks and if you walk it gets even crazier that's 120 attacks plus 30 percent more that's 150 attacks from 30 boys i don't think there's many units especially with the minus one ap now that are going to survive 150 attacks at plus one strength no doubt too so that's absolutely nuts. Unbridled Carnage uh, definitely going to be winning some games and some key turns for sure. The Relic is also a decent one. So a Goth models only. Uh, after making a close combat attack, the Bearer, they basically select an enemy unit within one inch of it. And this is before the consolidation. And on a they roll a D6 and on a 2+, plus, that unit suffers D3 mortal wounds. Always nice to have a way of... Um, inflicting mortal wounds. I don't think it's necessarily a top tier relic, but I still think uh, it's nothing... It, I think it does have some playability in certain lists. Overall, I would say the Goths are in a very strong position, and uh, I would say it's, it's, it is a competitive culture, hands down. Moving on to the Bad Moons. Bad Moons have an interesting change. So instead of having the rerolls of ones for shooting, now they get any DACA or heavy weapon profile gets 6 inches. So in improved range on your shooting, which is very interesting, actually. And on a wound roll of 6, you increase the AP by 1. So it's very interesting that um, Bad Moons is still technically benefiting from the volume of shots like Bad Moons have always benefited from. But now they also get the added range upgrade which is very interesting the warlord trait gives the warlord trait a four plus invuln and you also add one to its saving throws so you could essentially have a warlord and 
Meg Armor, that has a plus one saving throw. Obviously, ones always fail, but that means that if you have anybody with minus one AP, you're still rolling. You're still having a two plus save. I haven't seen um, uh, someone mention. I believe if you get the uh, Kill Crusher Armor and you have the uh, best armor Teeth can buy, you have literally a zero plus armor save. That means that anything that's not higher than three plus will not do anything to your two plus save, which is pretty insane if you really think about it. That's that's quite nuts. Now, showing off, which is the stratagem for the bad moons, is I, I, I like the old showing off where you can shoot twice, but essentially uh, this is giving you the old school Daka 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 where any core or bad moons character on a roll of six scores an additional one hit. So that that's kind of interesting um, because now sixes, if you, and it's only one CP, which is quite cheap. Uh, now the thing is it's affecting bad moons core and bad moons character which I believe is limiting its use. Uh, there's not a, many things. I mean, you could still have bikers doing a whole lot of shots. I mean, uh, you, you guys may have already heard about bikers. If you have uh, nine of them, that's like 90 shots. And then if you're getting an additional 17%, that's quite a lot of shots. That's almost like 100 shots at range, which is quite rare for orcs to really have. So... Bad moons overall, I feel, are not like super super competitive at this moment, just because I do think the rerolls was a little stronger. Range, I don't feel like orcs are are really. We never really have a problem with range because most of our guys are moving up anyways. However, I do think that this bad moons culture is gonna influence people to develop a different style of play that we may not have been seeing, which is like an orc gun line where you kind of just stay back and shoot at everything. Who knows, maybe Ludas might make another appearance as they really benefit from these and it looks like they're specifically made to benefit uh, Ludas and infantry like mass volumes of fire. So that's the bad moons. The relic I feel is a little underwhelming. So the relic, it just replaces a something with a custom shooter but there's not many many models with custom shooters honestly. So you replace a custom shooter with a 12 inch, it's a heavy 2d6 it's like a flamer but it's only strength 5 uh, ap minus 1 it's and 1 damage so the relic is definitely passable don't think we'll see much of that relic but overall bad moons i like that they're trying to introduce like this kind of ranged shooty orc list and again this is all theory crafting maybe we'll see some people think of some crazy things with the bad moons i mean one thing i can already think of is like just having a bunch of kill tanks with the Giga Shooters just brapping at insane 46 range and giving them DACA DACA and just, oh, that, that might be a little ugly, honestly, especially with improving their armor penetration by one. We'll see what uh, people come up with with the Bad Moons. Overall, I think the Bad Moons are still going to see some play, especially in the beginning. I think a lot of people will try to figure out things with the Bad Moons. Moving on to the Evil Suns. Evil Suns, slight nerf, so uh, they get the one inch extra in the movement and one inch extra in the advance, but they no longer get the one inch extra movement when they're charging, which is a mix of those deep strike tactics with Evil Suns a little nerfed. At the same time, we didn't really see much of that uh, late later in the meta. Most people didn't weren't even really playing a lot of Evil Suns. There were some Horde Evil Suns list. I think Horde Evil Suns list will still be very good. Now the Warlord trait is very interesting. So in your command phase. Uh, any Evil Sun's core within six inches of the model, they can uh, they can declare a charge even if they advanced or fell back. So it's like the old school War Boss aura that we used to have, that six inch um, War Boss era aura. But now it works for falling back, so that adds some uh, level of movement trickery. Uh, Drive by Daka is the stratagem, which is one CP, which is actually great, a great costing stratagem. And if you use this on an Evil Sun Speed Freaks, so you must target an Evil Sun Speed Freaks at the end of its at the end of the shooting phase, uh, that guy can make a normal move. So it cannot charge, but it can make a normal move. I think that's pretty big for one CP. That means that, I mean, given Speed Freak models get two inches of extra movement, you could have War Biker shoot and move 16 inches after. That's pretty crazy. I'm definitely going to be interested in seeing what people come up with with Drive-By DACA. It's going to be 
that's going to be a nasty turn one for your opponent. You could basically block out a lot of stuff and cause a huge headache with those bikers. And even crazier yet is the relic. So the relic is uh, can be taken by a vehicle. The relic is Res Mecha's red or paint, and uh, you give it. You can give it to a vehicle. So you add two inches to that bearer's movement. So now you're getting three plus inch, uh, three three inches of extra movement, four plus if it's Evil Suns, and at the start of the fight phase, uh, anyone within engagement range of that unit that has a relic. They cannot fight until all of your army fights. So it's like super fight last. That's That I think is going to see some play with... Maybe we'll see some battle wagons uh, roll up with this and just cause headaches for melee armies and just make a bad time for them. Evil Sons I think we'll see a lot of, especially in detachments and especially with that relic being very strong. We may see some Squigasaur bosses with that relic causing huge headaches for a lot of armies, especially making everybody... Fight last. Now the snake bites. So the snake bites have lost their their old um, uh, feel no pain. So their culture, the old ways, now gives all their units transhuman. So except Gretchen, unfortunately, it would have been hilarious to see transhuman Gretchen. I would have loved to see that, but unfortunately, Gretchen do not get transhuman, sadly. But uh. Essentially, all the units get transhuman. Uh, that means that on a roll of 1, 2, or a 3, that attack always fails. This is... I think it's a its a very interesting passive. It's, it's interesting in the sense that boys are no longer strength 4. So, at strength 5, you're benefiting from only strength 6 and 7 weapons. But, strength 6 and 7 weapons, you're reducing their effect, effectiveness at about... 17% so it adds even more survivability to your snake bites and uh, also each time a squig model with this culture attacks uh, if it charges or a hero can intervene you add one to the wound roll I think that's big especially with squig hog boys also getting plus one to wound on vehicles and also monsters I think they'll be a very potent threat against vehicles in close combat getting two plus to wound against them on a charge that's pretty huge given that squigs squig hawk boys even have seven attacks each that's uh that's pretty nasty boys that's uh you could be wounding vehicles on two plus three plus that's that's like gg for a lot of vehicles there now the warlord trait is pretty awesome it's a, it sounds like a lot of fun so the first time the warlord's uh, destroyed you roll a d6 and on a four plus it gets back up so that's awesome. It gets back up. With, however, it's only the three wounds remaining, and it's only the first time. But this could be an interesting thing to um, to use to maybe cheap out some objectives, uh, get some weird movement plays out of your warlord. Now, it, you you're not you can't put it in engagement range of enemy models, uh, which is interesting. But you, it says that you can put it as close as possible. So. That's a little bit of vague wording. I'm sure a lot of competitive players are going to think of some crazy movement tricks with that Warlord trait, and that's going to be a lot of fun. Their, their um, stratagem is really good, so any snake bites unit can attempt to uh, deny the Witch. It can attempt to deny the Psychic Power. So it costs 1 CP, Mystic Chanting. I think that's super strong. Having the ability to just deny, even without taking Psychers, is always great. And... That stratagem, I, I believe, we'll see a lot of play from Snake Bites. So, Snake Bites looking good there. The Relic, again, is not that exciting. So, the Relic, uh, what it does is that it you get like a grenade. So, it's a 3d6 grenade, strength 5, AP minus 1, and d1 attack. Now, each time you make an attack with it, it does wound on 2+. Plus, and uh, each unit within... Six inch of the target does serve for one mortal wound, so that is it. Does seem like it will have some limited play as it does give you a lot of mortal wounds, and there are more armies taking more and more units, so you could have a, a decent amount of mortal wounds using this weapon. But I think there's just way better relics, so this one I, I believe will be also a pass, which is the Brog's Buzz Bomb. Now, the Death Skulls. Oh, Death Skull. So a lot of people were very sad about 
the Death Skulls and uh, how they how they murdered our boys, the Death Skulls. How the mighty have fallen. On one hand, it's kind of nice to see that we're going to see the other clans played. And I still believe that we'll see a lot of Death Skulls because they still do have the OPSEC. So infantry units still do OPSEC. I think we'll still see patrol groups having commandos and storm boys for that ability to steal those objectives from your enemies. Also, you still get reroll, but it's for shoot or the fighting. It's not both. And uh, you can no longer reroll on damage, which was insane. So if you really think about it, I really miss those rerolls. You're probably not going to see many buggy lists, but who knows? You might see Outriders and have individual buggies as a Death Skulls because Death Skulls, you also get a Feel No Pain essentially for Mortal Wounds. So on a 5+, plus, you don't take any Mortal Wounds. And with vehicles getting Ramshackle, it is interesting that one of the ways which would be to take them out, which is Mortal Wounds, is you get a protection from that as Death Skulls. So overall, Death Skulls, they have taken a hit, but I think that in competitive play, we will still see patrol lists with them running Stone Boys and Commandos to get that sweet, sweet OPSEC on those boys. Now, the Warlord trait is honestly not that great. I don't think we're going to see many of this Warlord trait opportunist. Uh, each time you select a target for this Warlord, essentially, uh, if it's if a character unit you select was within 12 inches of that Warlord trait, Warlord, you can ignore the Lookout, sir. But, I mean, it's like an Assassin type of trait. However, you don't really have many Warlords that have a lot of blasting capability except the, um, the uh, Mech Gun. But... Uh, sorry, the shock attack gun, but the shock attack gun is not something you never really want to get close with your mech anyway. So I think this is negligible. And at any time an enemy vehicle is destroyed within six inches of your warlord, you gain one CP. I think this is a little too situational for a competitive play. If you're going into a casual game or a game where you know that your enemy will taking a lot of vehicles, then this could be a good trade for you. But overall, even with the stratagems not being as strong as they were before, I don't believe this is a, a trait that we're going to be seeing a lot of. These stratagem rekkas, which cost 2 CP, and uh, when you use it until the end of the fight phase, any Death Skull's core or characters, when they hit a vehicle, they add a 1 to the attack's wound roll. So again, a very situational, situational um, ability. I think it's a little too situational for this to be used that often, but you still may see uh, some people uh, whip this out on their Storm Boys or even Commandos maybe to uh, sneak in some extra damage on some vehicles. Now the Relic is uh, is kind of the same, it's the Fixer Uppers, so uh, Death Skull's Mech or Big Mech, and on a 2+, plus, that unit gains an additional wound when, it, when the Big Mech or Mech attempts to heal it. And uh, you can actually select a vehicle within 12 inches of the Relic Holder, and that vehicle suffers D3 Mortal Wounds. That is um, that is interesting. They try to buff it a bit, but again, we didn't see much mech play in competitive lists before. Maybe this will encourage it. Overall, I think the Death Skull's trait and the Relic and the Stratagem is just a little too situational, especially the traits and the Relics to be used that much in competitive play. But I think overall the culture itself, giving OPSEC and uh, letting people ignore mortal wounds, and you still get to reroll one of the hit or the wound roll. I think we'll see still some Death Skulls running around, just not in that in that same manner that we saw it. I think it'll be more of a taking a patrol of elite units to steal objectives sort of way. Now Blood Axes. Blood Axes have become actually very exciting. So Blood Axes, their culture is still the same. So Blood Axe Tactics, anytime uh, you make a range attack, or sorry, when enemies make a range attack, if you're more than 18 inches away, then you get the benefit of having uh, light cover. So that's like essentially plus one to your armor save. Uh, units with that culture are also eligible to uh, shoot or declare a charge, but it's now specified that you can't do both in a turn that you fell back. The Warlord trade, I've got a plan, that's when things get super interesting. So at the end of the year, deploy forces, you can select three blood axe units. So it's not core infantry, three units. And um, you can put them in strategic reserve without having to spend any additional CP. So that's uh, that's pretty good, putting three units in strategic reserve. I think it's going to be hilarious to put like a stomp, a 
like three stompers, or sorry, not three stompers, but like uh, sorry, um, three kill tanks in a strategic reserve and just prop plopping them around. Um, if you want a stomper, you would have to have a lot of points synced into your heavy auxiliary, but. Yeah, that's uh that's cool. Uh, I I would see even like buggies and death dreads using this, to um, to basically save them for second and third turn, so you can plop them on, and uh, you can even try to doing some uh, ramming speed, and uh, get into charge after essentially doing a strategic reserve. So that roller trade I think is very interesting and has a lot of sneaky abilities and mobility plays that you could do with. Um, I've got a plan, lads, the Warlord trade. The Stratagem, Dead Sneaky, also very interesting. So Blood Axe Infantries, except for Mega Armor. Anyone that's within 3 inch of the battlefield edge, you can place it in Strategic Reserve for 1 CP. That is super interesting. I think it's going to allow Blood Axes to be like this very mobile army, but not in the same way that Evil Sons is, but very sneaky. You can take things in and out of Reserve. And I think that will be a fun way to play the army. You could take a, a you know a squad of like maybe you had a squad of like ten truck boys and now they're sorry not truck boys but just regular boys who are blood axes and maybe they're down to two units so you just use dead sneaky and now you can just use them to screen out the backfield or hold a backfield objective. So I like it. I like the um, the strategy, especially at one CP. It's a, it seems very good. The relic is the the uh, Mor Morgog's Finkin cap, and uh, it can only be taken by a model. Actually, it can be taken by a vehicle too. So at the start of the command phase on a D6 on a four plus, you get back one command point. So that is uh, that's pretty cool because now what you can do is uh, you can just you essentially can pay a CP point to get this relic, and this relic is always going to be net positive as long as whatever is on the field last at least three turns you're gonna mathematically speaking you're always gonna make your cp back and if it lasts the whole five turns then you're gonna be net positive even though it's only a four plus uh however for competitive i don't think it's gonna be super super abusive uh we might just see it because it's like essentially if you put it on a vehicle that you think or a model that's gonna last more than three turns it's always net positive so i don't think it's game breaking but i think i do think it's like a nice little thing to have in your army. Now, free Buddhas. A lot of people talking about free Buddhas. Free Buddhas, I believe, are going to be very competitive now. So, free Buddhas culture, competitive streak. It used to be that you have to be around the unit. I believe it was like 12 inches or 24 inches. You have to. It, so, how it works is every time a free Buddha destroys an enemy unit, after that, un, its attacks have been all done and it's destroyed that enemy unit all the free buddhas around that unit like within 12 inches got plus one to hit now it's global so it's on the whole map all the free buddhas on the whole map get one to the attack roll now a lot of people might be saying yeah but you can always only have plus one native to your ballistic skill to uh, benefit from this so you know get, killing two enemy units may not be that great well there's a lot of units now that are giving you minus one to hit so this is a great way to bypass that minus one to hit and with so many of the units that we have becoming super crazy at shooting like squig buggies um having indirect fire same with the uh kill rigs having indirect fire and bikers just having an insane amount of shots 90 shots i think that's going to be an easy way to trigger competitive streak and then when that is triggered we're going to see a lot of shooty orcs not only the culture the warlord trait warlord trait is all right uh enemy units within three inches subtract one to the leadership and uh you subtract one from the combat attrition so a nice way to um nice way to just i guess try to make more things run away uh, also interesting is that any friendly free buddhas within six inches get one to the leadership so not bad but I wouldn't say it's uh, going to see much play. We'll see if anyone thinks of any sneaky little ways to use this trait. But I personally believe it's not going to be um, that competitive until people find out some ways to abuse it, which you guys always do. Now, get the loot. Their stratagem, I think, is really strong. So for 1 CP, uh, at the start of your command phase, you select one free Buddha's infantry from your army. And until the next command phase, they get OPSEC. So that is... That is pretty good. 
I think because of this trait, uh, sorry, the stratagem, you're going to be able to see full free Buddha army. So you're going to be able to see an army just all free Buddhas, maybe three detachments of free Buddhas so you can maximize all your HQs. I think free Buddhas will definitely be competitive because this, this alone is a lot of value. Their relic is also really crazy. So for competitive play, again, the name of the game in 9th edition is Objectives. And their relic, the Bat Skull Mana, okay, it can be taken by a vehicle too, and any enemy within 6 inch of that bearer, it loses a hopsec. So that is crazy. I think this is going to see play because just ripping away obsec from your enemies is nuts and it is fabulous so the bad skull banna i i know we're going to see playing competitive that is going to be nuts you're basically going to get a free objective in the middle of the map or on your enemy side i'm just getting chills thinking about it it's it's going to be lit it is going to be lit so free buddha seem really lit Leave a comment below. I uh, would love to see them. And uh, if you enjoy the video, I really appreciate everyone who subs and likes to the channel. Uh, this channel has grown beyond my wildest dreams. I really made this for my friends to share some orc love with my friends. But now it's great to see you guys commenting, liking the videos. I really appreciate that. I would love to see orcs to be a competitive faction. So I love that. We have this uh, community that's just diehard orcs, and we're always trying to just make the orcs work, and it's it's off, it's awesome, and it's just it's just beautiful. So thanks for watching. Stay safe out there, guys. Keep rolling those dice, and until next time, you guys have a good one.